It is June 15th, I think. Yeah, June 15th, 2014, Sunday. And I've just arrived at the boundary of Dinosaur Provincial Park in Alberta, uh, which is a Badlands area along the Red Deer River, a little bit north of Brooks, Alberta. And um, I'm going to be meeting some of my students here for a, a camp, a sleepover. And then we're going to be investigating uh, various archaeological sites um, on the north rim of the Red Deer River Cooley. Um, some of the students have already pushed out and are not going to show up. Uh, because it's been raining and it's supposed to rain tonight. It's supposed to rain tomorrow and Personally, I don't care um, It's summer. I'm out here. I'm gonna stay the night. Didn't even bring a tent Brought my brought my sleeping bag my bivy sack and I'm ready to go um, But uh, yeah, so tomorrow way out there on the horizon is the north rim of the Red Deer River and that's where I'm planning to be because there's a whole bunch of really cool um, sacred Blackfoot sites out there but for those who uh, are not willing to swim across the river um, because there are roads that that access that area but they're you know when it's been raining um, you really can't use those roads um, and for those who don't with me today, um, they're going to be seeing probably this rock and this is a um, I like how they've got this uh, big steel jungle gym um, hooked over it basically this is a uh, sacred Blackfoot stone, an ancient Blackfoot stone. Um, you can see it's got uh, what I would interpret as um, stars um, on it. Those pock marks that are uh, they're made on it. I've, you know, we see these in in a variety of designs. Um, I suspect those are those are either stars. Or the other possibility is that they are hailstones from thunder. And we do have a line uh, going, going across the rock, um, zigzagging. It's very possible that those are the lines of thunder. Um, but, on the other hand, you know, it's, it's impossible to tell. Um, nobody has a memory of what this stone was representing, um, what's its purpose for being here, and um, what's the story behind it, nobody knows anymore. Um, it may be that we know one of the stories about it, but we just have yet to make the connection. Um, that's very possible, it certainly happened at other sites of this sort where we've kind of like uh, been disengaged from it. You know, for a long time, um, people were not allowed off of the reserves during the early colonial period. You know, you had to get a, a special permit to get off of the reserve or you could go to jail. So a lot of these sites that are, you know, even this, like, which is like three hours off of the reserve, off of the blood reserve, um, the significance of them have been forgotten because for decades, um, for, for probably, let's see, I'd say probably at least 60 years, maybe 70 years, nobody visited these sites. And so that's long enough um, to lose memory of it. Not to mention, even before that, there was almost 100 years of intense um, colonial warfare with the, um, with the newcomers, as well as the tribes that were being pushed east and into Blackfoot territory that kind of shook things up. And so um, there was some connection lost even there. But yeah, um, this is a sacred rock. And it's hard to say exactly 
for sure what's going on there, but I would say either it's the night sky or we are looking at a rock that has something to do with a thunder. So, and I'm going to uh, cross these guys' jungle gym and head down to my campsite in the Badlands, away from the students there. All right, so this is uh, the area where I'll be spending the night, hopefully with at least some of my students. Um, the ones that show up, nobody is here yet. So I think I'm gonna uh, jump back in the vehicle and go back uh, a little ways, see if I can get some gas, because I forgot to gas up. Um, but uh, yeah, this is the area where we're sleeping. There's not much going on here. Um, there's a little creek. And uh, it looks like, because of the recent rains, it looks like it's pretty silty. Um, the Red Deer River, this creek is flowing into the Red Deer River, which is just down that way. It's not far. The Red Deer River is the one we're going to be crossing to get to um, some of the old Blackfoot sites some of the stone cairns that we want to see. Uh, but yeah, uh, since I got just a little bit of time, I'm going to run back up, see if I can find some place to gas up quick, so I'm not concerned about running out of gas down here um, in case I need to drive anywhere. All right, here's a little bit of a uh, bird's eye view of the area. A couple of my students did show up. They got a tent down there. I'm up here in the uh, Badlands looking for something like a, uh, maybe a cavern um, or a little overhang, something where I can um, be shielded from the rain. That's a big thing because chances are tonight it's gonna rain um, and this is truly the badlands bad meaning that potentially <laughs> you can fall through um, into some unknown um, cavern or, or uh, what have you but yeah I'm looking for some place to set up my sleeping bag where I can be out of the rain and um, I'm sure there's somewhere around here to do that. Yeah, this truck coming in here I think is uh, my group. Sure. I did find a potential cavern um, over here. Nice um, deep place right in here. Where I can possibly uh, that I can possibly crawl into. Let's just try it. Uh, it doesn't look that inviting. It looks a little bit wet, actually, down there, so maybe not. I might end up having to uh, string up the hammock. I do have a uh, hammock in my backpack. Um, don't necessarily need it. Could just cover myself with a bivy sack, but hammock at least keeps me off the ground, so maybe I'll do that. Ah, oh, good show. You guys got some wood. <laughs> None over there, so we gotta find our own. Yeah, I was up looking for a nice hole to uh, camp in, but uh, well, you're going to camp. Uh, I think on the other side. Yeah, pretty pretty much everything looks like uh, 
the water's flowing through it, so I'm gonna string up my hammock, I think. Ah. Okay, I found my sleeping spot and prepared it. And um, this is it, basically. Um, it's uh, this is my sleeping bag, and it's covered with what's called a bivy sack, which is basically a Gore-Tex rainproof layer. Um, my sleeping bag is good to about 40 degrees below zero, so plenty warm for evening like tonight, which is it's summertime. I hang up a uh, hammock between a couple of bullberry plants or bullberry trees, um, basically so that I'm off the ground so that I don't have to worry about rattlesnakes. Um, I might still get some ticks, but at least the, uh, the really dangerous stuff I don't have to worry about. I'll be hanging in this tree. And uh, this is basically an, an improvisation on a theme that I used the whole time I was in the military. Usually I used this kind of a hammock in the military, um, but I would string another um, rope along the top and then I would hang in a V shape um, a, uh, a tarp. And I did that last year in the mountains in Nastucco as well. Um, but I, I want to try out, um, in fact, I'm kind of hoping to get rained on tonight because I want to try out how efficient the bivy sack is without a tarp. If the bivy sack works without a tarp, then that's one more item I can ditch from my bag, um, from my bug out bag. And so... Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping it rains. If it doesn't rain, um, even still, at least this should keep me nice, warm, dry, cozy, hanging in the sack. It, it should be a good night's sleep. We'll see. His hat, his paws were like this. <laughs> <laughs> like he was guarding what was left of the food. Uh, <laughs> we were just laughing. It's like, oh well, they they all got a good meal. <laughs> Jeez, bullberry burns pretty good. Yeah, it does. Yeah, is it when you get the smoke in your eyes, it hurts pretty good, but too but, <laughs> but as long as you're not on that side, you're okay. I'm glad they had this. This uh, outdoor cookout area. Oh. Yeah. Yep, this is it. It's great. So I was in that hammock briefly last night, but then it dumped me on my head, so I went up on the ground and just decided to stay here. Um, it hurt pretty good, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was comfortable sleeping on the ground didn't get any rain so all is well Finally, after an extended search, 
we have found uh, Noppy's effigy. That's his foot, foot, legs, dick, <laughs> yeah. body comes up, arm comes out this way, arm goes out that way, head. <laughs> he's uh he's endowed fertility Yeah, he's got his elbow hooked, eh? Huh. Comes around like that. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Here's his other arm. Here. Put him parked on the edge. Okay. Just scouting around uh, the dinosaur park and finding uh, pieces of bone, dinosaur bone. Just coming out like like this one right here. Just coming out of the Badlands. Haven't seen. Uh, there was one really nice skeleton down in this area that was coming out a few years back, but it might have eroded away. Not sure.